Hey everybody, it's Stu Fuchs from Ukulele Zen with another episode of Ask Stu. Every Monday I answer three questions from you good folks. If you would like your questions answered, please leave a question in the comment section below. If I choose your question, I will send you some tracks from my CDs to enjoy. So I look forward to hearing from you, and I'm loving this series. I guess we'll keep doing it unless, uh, you know, interest falls off. So as long as you're interested in hanging with me, I am so happy to be hanging with you. Before we get started with today's questions, just wanted to remind you that registration is still open for the third annual Ukulele Zen Retreat. This is a five-day retreat that I offer every year at the amazing Omega Institute. Omega is a fantastic campus and a transformational place to be. On top of that, it's going to take place during their Arts Week. So it's really a fantastic time to immerse yourself in creative play. And of course, the Ukulele Zen program is going to show you so much about playing and also how to blend meditation, yoga, and accessible practices from both of these arts into your music making to make music ever more joyful, easier, and how to make it flow in a way that's really natural for you. So if you're interested in joining us, we'd love to have you. There's a link in the video description below and floating around here too. So thanks so much. Hope to see you at Ukulele Zen this July 2018. Click the link to find out all about it. This is going to be the last episode before I leave on a four-week tour of Europe. I'm playing concerts with Sanatam Kar all over the continent. If you'd like to see the places where I will be, there's a link in the video description below to my calendar, stufuchs.com slash calendar. Next time I come to Europe, I really hope to visit more places with my own concerts and my own ukulele workshops. Maybe I'll see you out there. Big hello to all my friends in Europe. The first question comes from Tracy, and Tracy asked about ukuleles. I'm an intermediate player looking for a better ukulele than is good value. I upgraded to a better wood koa with a solid top $300 range, but I really don't like it much better than my $80 entry level. What do you suggest for a good value but great sound, tuning, and playability? Tracy, I wish I could answer this question with greater authority. Unfortunately, I'm not really a great gear guy. I know something about instruments and their construction, but I'm not one of those cats who knows everything about every type of wood, and I've definitely never been an instrument builder except my own little homemade toys. What I will say is this. Very often, an instrument, um, you know, its playability, the way it sounds to you, is such a personal thing that I have some guitars and ukuleles that cost me $50 that sound and feel just as good as the ones that cost me $3,000. It's a weird thing. And it, the only thing I could offer is that just to play a lot of ukuleles and visit some great blogs. Got a ukulele? Ukulele Underground. Uh, these are just the tip of the iceberg of all kinds of great forums where you can um, you know, visit and ask questions and get other people's opinions, people who know more about the construction of instruments than I do. So I hope your search is fruitful. When you do find an instrument that fits, it's like a shoe. When it fits, you'll know and you'll love it and you'll wear it every day. The next question is from Steve and he asked about playing melodies on the ukulele. Great question. Let's check it out. What method or practice would you recommend for learning to play melodies instead of chord accompaniments? Steve, this is a great question and it's one that I could spend the next 10 years talking about, so let's jump into it. I think it all comes down to picking single notes with good full tone and developing one finger per fret technique. In a previous episode of Ask Stu, I showed this exercise, one, two, three, four, or I may have done it just with three fingers. This is a great preliminary exercise and it really trains the hand. Now what I'd like to do now is to play a scale and have you play it with me. Let's start on the D major scale. Well, so first finger on the second fret, D. Third finger on the E. First finger on the F sharp. Second finger on the G. Fourth finger on the A. First finger on the B. Third finger on the C sharp. And then on the D. What you want to do, Steve, and everybody else out there, is you know, develop this ability to have smooth, connected notes. 
in order to have smooth, nice legato sound, the timing of the left hand's placement on the next note is crucial. So you wanna pay almost more attention to the timing of the left hand and let the left hand inform the picking. Take a listen. See, I wait, right there I pick. Here our every note is smooth and connected. So Steve, if you're asking me for, you know, what should I practice, what method? Well, I think just playing slow scales, making them sound beautiful. Just do this for a couple of minutes every day. And pretty soon, all your melodies will sound like this, nice and smooth and connected. What we want to do is to have a connected sound, not this. Notice how my fingers are flying up in the air. So keep the fingers close to the fretboard, which will happen naturally. When the hand is relaxed, the fingers will stay close to the fretboard. See, try to leave the fingers down. You're not leaving them down because you're squeezing hard and forcing them down. You're leaving them down just because their hand is soft and it's staying relaxed. So after you spend some time cultivating a smooth technique where you leave your fingers down, and this exercise is a great one for doing this. After you do that, well, what do we do next? Well, we can go of two routes. One is to play pre-composed melodies. For example, uh, I don't know, Ode to Joy by Beethoven. Etc. Etc. Please stop the video and copy that. That's a really good melody to know by heart. The second route is to improvise. Improvisation is not as scary as you might think. Improvisation is just the courage to move from one note to the next. And you know something? You've been improvising your whole life. You know, you're improvising every moment of your day. I know a lot of our life may seem like it's programmed and scheduled. But there's actually a lot of improvisation. You never know what's going to happen between your house and the bus stop. You know, anything could happen. And um, that's what music improvisation essentially is like. Now, without getting too woo-woo and out there about it, which I can easily do, I want to give you some practical tips. How do you begin to improvise and how can you use the scale to make uh, some melodies? Well, let's play with a very simple improvisation game, one of many improvisation games I'd love to share with you. This is one I call Sound and Silence. Okay, you're gonna play some sounds and you're gonna punctuate them with silence. Just like when you speak, you hear? Punctuating with silence. So the way this game is played is you treat every note like it's a word in a sentence. And when we speak, we punctuate our words with commas, periods, exclamation marks. And what you want to do is don't say too much. You know, just say a few words, all right? Would you drum along? Come on, keep the beat for me. Ready? Here we go. is kind of simple and that's fine we want to communicate in a way where people understand check it out it's like I'm just blabbing on and on and on it's fun for me but what is it really saying to you Punctuation in your improvisation, it's really what's going to connect the listener to you. The power of silence is everything. So when you play, you can start your idea with an exclamation mark. And if you like it, do it again, man. Do it again. Here I go. And maybe you end it a little bit differently. So repeat your ideas. Punctuate your ideas with silences and improvise in this way.
there's so much to say on this subject and I look forward to sharing it with you, especially in my online course that I'll launch later this year. God willing, I will launch it later this year. It's going to be a lot of work, but I can't wait to share all these games with you. So I hope that this is a fun springboard for you to improvise. And remember, you don't even need a scale. You can just plop your fingers anywhere. Sound and silence. Have fun. And remember, if it sounds good to you, it is good. All right, everybody, that's my time. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hope you'll subscribe to Ukulele Zen. Give this a thumbs up, please. And hope you share this video with your friends. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take good care. Keep on jamming.